Next on our list for tonight, Avoidant by HBAR. This is the developer's first time finishing a game. And as somebody who's only finished, like, I think two games I've made in my life, I can appreciate that. It's a tough thing. It's a very trying and tough thing. He says this is his polished take on the old Avoid the Enemy style games, a genre which I myself had gotten addicted to many times in the past Flash era. You guys might remember back in the days of old dial-up and 56K. For those of you who don't know what 56K is, count yourself lucky. That was a curse. Oh, my. But anyway, the catch with this game, however, you need to stay near certain enemies in order to level up. This game has no death, but is instead designed with the intent of seeing how quickly you can beat it. Knowing my abilities, I'll find a way to die anyway, despite this being a game with no death. Well, let's see how it goes. This is Avoidance. I love that, that pulsing bass right at the start. It basically says it all about this game. I love it. Now this game promises procedural graphics. I'm not quite sure what that means, but let's try the tutorial. On a gamepad or... Wait, I'll oh, press A on gamepad or return on keyboard to advance in the tutorial. Press B to quit the tutorial. There we go. You can also use... Oops, I think I was supposed to look at the bottom there for that first part. Let's, let's try that again. I failed the tutorial. I already lost! Why? Use the game stick or the arrow keys to move around. Okay, so it looks like this one actually... Maybe it's because my PS3 controller, I don't know, but it's using the right game stick, not the left one to move around. Seems a little odd, but I'll take. You can also use space or gamepad trigger to get extra speed. Oh, there we go. Looks like R2 is doing it for me. So you get extra speed by holding R2. Oh, that must be the absurd procedural graphics he was talking about going on in the background. I like that. That's some... What's it called? I took math. I know this. That's some refractory crap right there. I think it's refractory. Re refractoring? I don't know. That's cool. I like that. Oh, here we go. Here come the enemies. So avoid touching the enemies. Simple enough. I've done this quite a bit in my life. Enemies that are different shapes will get to try to get you. Enemies of the same shape will try to avoid you. Interesting. So, enemies are actively avoiding me, depending on the shape that I currently am. That's cool. Collect energy while near an enemy of the same shape. I guess this tutorial is really well thought out. It's actually restricting certain movements and certain abilities. Like, I don't know if you saw, I wasn't collecting energy that first time when I was uh, on top of the enemy. That's cool, because it's taking its time and explaining its features. The closer you are to an enemy, the faster that you will collect the energy. Fill the meter around you to win. So this must be the win state. Cool. All right, let's try it. Oh, there's a multiplayer. We'll come to that later. All right, so I'm a triangle. Let's get some triangle. Get back here. Oh, I changed. I'm a diamond now. Oh, that's cool. So I don't stay the same shape. I thought I was just going to stay the same shape the whole time. All right, so the procedural graphics going on in the background. I'm not sure what's triggering them. But if there is no trigger, might I make a suggestion that I would like to see those come closer and closer together the more filled up my bark becomes. Or I want to see I want to see some kind of alteration of that equation going on in the background. Oh, I think I got hit. Some kind of alteration of that equation going on in the background to make it look cooler as the bar fills up. Some kind of variable to just change it up. Oh, I changed. The changing seems like it could become a little more obvious. I'm keeping an eye on my character, but I'm also keeping a lot of... I'm paying a lot of attention to the enemies around me, making sure I don't get hit. Wow, this place gets flooded quick, too. Oh, my. As I said, though, there is no failure state. I do notice when I get hit, though, they all kind of... Everything moves slower, including myself. So that's cool. And I like... Okay, that's cool, though. He fills in whatever you currently are going for. So you'll know you're going for something because it's filled in. Change! Change places! Go, go, go. Fill up, fill up. This is creative, I gotta say. I've never seen a take on the Avoid the Enemy style game like this. It does seem to get very flooded, though, very quickly. And that could just be my inability to play this genre correctly, but... Ooh, it is tough. But that's okay, because even if I'm getting hit, it's not a big deal. I'm not losing anything except time. So it becomes a game that seeing if you can master it, you know? At the same time, I feel like I'm exploiting that, though, because I'm just getting near enemies during my downtime. 
So moving slower isn't really a big deal to me, as long as I'm near my enemies. Once I come back up, I'm just gonna get more juice. I feel like the trigger button becomes unnecessary after a certain point, but again, that could just be my own ability to play the game properly. Nope, there we go, I just actually used it and it helped, so never mind. Trigger button's totally necessary. Moving faster, that little burst of speed's very easy. Alright, so if this game's all about seeing how fast you can do it, I notice I'm not getting timed. Hopefully there's a timer at the end. I'm sure that there must be, because that this game just screams, give me a leaderboard. Now, I was told to use a controller, but after this we're going to see how it plays with mouse and keyboard, because this is a pretty standard genre. Mouse and keyboard could definitely handle something like this very nicely. Hmm. I wonder almost if enemies that hit me should go away, or at least spawn somewhere else immediately. I see they try to move away from me, like when I get hit there they all kind of move away from me. So actually, maybe that's okay in and of itself. Maybe there doesn't really need to be any kind of escape other than slow moving away from it. Come on, so close. Let's fill her up. Giggity. Got it. Aha, it is being recorded. All right, now I just need a leaderboards. That'd be sweet. Press R to restart. Okay, let's see how it plays with mouse and keyboard. Because remember, this is a PC game. WASD does not move me around. What moves me around? Uh oh. Apparently clicking off screen doesn't move me around either. Uh, okay, I think the keyboard controls were a lie. A big filthy lie. Could be because I have the controller plugged in. I love this song though. So let's see about multiplayer. Multiplayer? Hang on. I... Uno momento por favor. I do have another controller. No, nope, another controller doesn't seem to affect... Oh, wait, yeah, it does. Huh, that's weird. I can still control things, but not... Okay, that's not happening. So, multiplayer just might be busted right now, which is, you know, that's fine. Not a big deal. This is in its prototype phase, I believe. The game is definitely good. I just question the replayability of it all. If you're gonna... Obviously, I'm gonna need a leaderboards. That's first and foremost. If you're gonna have me want to try to beat this game as fast as I possibly can, I'm gonna need incentive. And competition is always the best incentive. So give me a leaderboards. But what you might want to consider for a game like this, give different levels. And I know that sounds weird. Like, how can you make different levels for this? Think about starting off with level one being just two shapes, right? Two shapes. You can have more than just two, one of each shape, of course, but two shapes to it. Then after that, you can increment it by three or something like that. Then after that, you can increment it by four, but you make uh, one of them giant or something like that. You know, very hard to avoid. Or, you know, th think about mutations you can add in this game. Something to give it more zazz. Something, something to give it that little extra edge over every other avoid the enemy game. You have a great concept here with the whole getting close to an enemy thing. And an enemy actually trying to avoid you while you're avoiding other enemies. It's a good idea. But expand on it. I know you can expand on this. It has potential. And the graphic style is great. The controls are smooth, quite frankly. My inability to actually play it well, don't let that uh, fool you. I can feel that these controls are as tight as you could possibly want them to be. And the D-pad, not the D-pad, the analog stick plays perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. Oh, wait, I think I just realized something. It wouldn't make sense, but... Oh, that's what it is. Each, each player gets an analog stick. <laughs> I don't really know, I guess you could kind of put the, put it down, and then just like, okay, I see. And it becomes a competition to see who can fill up the most. I don't know why I didn't think of that first, but, yeah, I like it. Now what you gotta do is you gotta slap this bad boy in the face, and make it a mobile game. Get some dual wheeled uh, controllers on that, you know, uh, uh, dual sticks. Actually, you just need one stick, that makes it even easier, controls are, controls are easy. But definitely, uh, I, I would love to see the procedurally generated uh, background to be more procedurally generated. I want to see it actually 
change up depending on the state of the game. As much as I like the breathing effect, and it is cool, make it just... This, this clearly is all done mathematically. This is not pre-rendered, I can tell. This is being done on the spot. So find some way to get the to get the equation somehow evolved in the current game's variables. And if that comes down to the filling up of the uh, of a character's bar, like I mean I see right here, one of the characters is blue, one is yellow. If that comes down to, hey, the blue guy is bigger, have the blue dominate the screen more. Get some particle effects in there. Do do something, change it up, make it look really cool. I just want to see really cool stuff. But yeah, awesome. I think that's about... Oh, there are high scores. So there is a leaderboard. Uh, no kind of name input, but that's fine. You could maybe have an online leaderboard. But again, challenges. Challenges would make this game great. I just love the idea of getting more challenges in this. Just a level system, you know? Angry Birds Day, you can do it. I believe in you. But I think that's about all I can look at for Avoidant right now. Surprisingly, it was not a game about avoiding ants, but I think I'm okay with that. I like it. I like it a lot. HBAR. Keep going with it. Keep going. I say that to all the developers because it's true. Every developer should never give up on their game. Every developer should keep going with their game. If you think your game's good, you can make it great. If you think your game's great, make it perfect. If you think it's perfect, you're lying. <laughs> That's just a lie. But yeah, definitely keep going with this game, man. I like it. Thanks a lot for submitting it, HBAR.